For years, explorers and archaeologists have searched for the evidence of a lost civilization, and finally they have found it. So, today we are talking about the Minoan civilization that according to many scientists were more advanced than we are today, and things and technology that have been discovered that the Minoans possessed is hard to explain how is this possible. No doubt about it, the Minoan city was the most well-known incredible place in the olden times. Even though the Minoans disappeared suddenly, the story continued to be told and became even more popular over the centuries. The Minoan civilization thrived during a time called the Middle Bronze Age on the island of Crete, which is in the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. They had their own special style of art and buildings, and their ideas influenced other cultures in the surrounding area. This all played a big part in shaping the development of Western European civilization. Minoan Crete had some unique things that made it special. They had big palace buildings that were like mazes, and their walls were covered in colorful paintings, showing things like people jumping over bulls and groups of people walking together. They also made beautiful jewelry out of gold, fancy vases out of stone, and pots that were decorated with bright pictures of sea creatures. Also, Graham Hancock has put forth some alternative theories and interpretations. One of his notable claims is that the Minoans were heavily influenced by a much older and advanced civilization, which he refers to as the Atlanteans. Hancock suggests that the Atlanteans had sophisticated knowledge of engineering, navigation, and other advanced technologies, and that they passed down this knowledge to the Minoans. Hancock's ideas about the Minoans and their connection to Atlantis are not supported by the mainstream archaeological community. The prevailing view among experts is that the Minoan civilization developed independently on Crete, influenced by various cultural and trade interactions with neighboring civilizations, such as the Egyptians and the Mycenaeans. In the early 1900s, an archaeologist named Sir Arthur Evans became interested in the idea of an ancient civilization on the island of Crete. He got a clue when he saw small carved stones that were worn as lucky charms by the people who lived there. These stones made him think that there might have been an important culture in the past. From 1900 to 1905, Evans started digging at a place called Knossos on Crete. There, he found a lot of old remains that matched up with the stories and legends about a fancy culture ruled by a King Minos. He believed that this was the place where the legendary labyrinth and palace were located. Evans was the one who came up with the term Minoan to describe this ancient culture, named after King Minos. He thought that the civilization on Crete had different phases throughout the Bronze Age, which he divided based on different styles of pottery. The phases were called the Early Minoan, Middle Minoan, and Late Minoan, each with their own time period. Later on, they made the divisions more detailed by adding numbers to each group, like MM2. Scientists also use special techniques like radiocarbon dating and tree ring calibration to get more accurate dates. Now we know that the Early Bronze Age started around 3500 BC and the Late Bronze Age started around 1700 BC. Another way to look at the history of Minoan Crete was created by someone named Platon. Instead of focusing on specific time periods, this scheme pays more attention to the important events that happened in and around the big Minoan palaces. According to this scheme, there were four periods, pre-palatial, proto-palatial, neo-palatial, and post-palatial. These two ways of understanding Minoan history have been questioned by newer archaeological and historical approaches. These newer approaches believe that the development of culture on Crete was more complex and had multiple paths. They suggest that there were conflicts and inequalities between different settlements, and they also take into account the cultural differences and similarities among them. In other words, they think that things were not as straightforward as the previous scheme suggested. Furthermore, archaeologists have discovered Minoan settlements, tombs, and cemeteries throughout the island of Crete. However, there were four main palace sites that were particularly important. These sites, listed by size, were Knossos, Phaistos, Melia, and Zakros. In each of these places, there were big and complicated palace buildings that served as important centers for local administration, trade, religion, and maybe even politics. However, we don't have enough evidence from archaeology or ancient writings to fully understand how the power was structured within the palaces or over the entire island. What we do know is that the palaces had some control over certain things, especially when it came to gathering and storing extra supplies like wine, oil, grain, precious metals, and pottery. They played a role in managing these resources within their specific areas. The area around each palace had small towns, villages, and farms. These settlements were spread out, and they seemed to be under the control of a single palace. There were roads that connected these isolated settlements to each other, 
and to the main center, which was the palace. Historians generally agree that, until around 1700 BC, each palace operated independently from the others. However, after that time, the palaces started to come under the influence of Knossos. This is supported by the fact that there was more similarity in the architecture of the palaces and the use of a writing system, called Linear A, across different palace sites. The fact that the settlements didn't have any walls or fortifications implies that the different communities probably lived together peacefully. However, the discovery of weapons like swords, daggers and arrowheads, as well as defensive gear like armor and helmets, suggests there may have been times when peace was not guaranteed. According to various discoveries, Minoans possessed advanced technology in the same sense as modern society. Some interpretations and theories have suggested that they had a relatively high level of technological development for their time. It's interesting to point out that the Minoans were known for their elaborate frescoes, vibrant pottery, and intricate jewelry. Some of these artworks depict scenes that have been interpreted as evidence of advanced knowledge, such as the famous Boxing Boys fresco, which shows two young athletes engaged in a sport similar to modern boxing. Furthermore, the Minoans were seafaring people who had a significant influence on maritime trade in the Mediterranean. Their ships were well designed and capable of long distance voyages, suggesting a level of navigational knowledge and very advanced technology that made all of this possible. Also, many scientists propose the existence of advanced gadgets or aircrafts in Minoan society. However, Attributing advanced technology or aircraft to them is speculative and lacks substantial evidence. With that, the Minoan road showed signs of guardhouses and watchtowers along the way, indicating that there were concerns about bandits and attacks on travelers. This suggests that even though the communities may have coexisted peacefully, there were still incidents of theft or violence that needed to be addressed and guarded against. The palaces went through two main periods. The first palaces were built around 2000 BC. However, Due to destructive earthquakes and fires, they were reconstructed around 1700 BC. These second palaces survived until they were finally destroyed between 1500 BC and 1450 BC. The destruction could have been caused by earthquakes, fires, or perhaps even invasion, or a combination of all three. The palaces were grand structures, designed with careful attention to detail. They had large open areas, called courts, and columns made of tapered wooden beams that supported the ceilings. There were staircases, hidden religious rooms called crypts, wells that let in natural light, advanced drainage systems, and large storage rooms. Some palaces even had areas similar to theaters where people could gather for public shows or religious ceremonies. These palaces were quite impressive, with some of them towering up to four stories high and covering a vast area of several thousand square meters. The palaces were intricate and had various features that played a role in shaping the legends and myths surrounding them. One such feature was the sport of bull leaping, which was depicted in the artwork found in the palaces. The worship of bulls was also evident, with sacred bull's horns and images of double axes, known as labris, appearing in stone and frescoes throughout the palaces. These elements likely contributed to the creation of the famous legend of Theseus and the Minotaur, a creature believed to dwell in a labyrinth. This myth became well known in later ancient Greek mythology, possibly inspired by the bull-related symbolism and practices associated with the Minoan palaces. Across the ancient world, other cultures thrived contemporaneously, contributing to a vibrant tapestry of interlinked ancient societies. First, the Mycenaean civilization was a significant contemporary, located on mainland Greece, active between 1600 and 1100 BC. They emerged as the Minoan civilization was nearing its decline, and there's ample evidence of cultural and trade interactions between them. Archaeological evidence suggests significant Minoan influence on Mycenaean culture, particularly in its early stages. The Mycenaeans adopted many elements of Minoan art, architecture, and religious practices. The palace complexes of Mycenae, Pylos, and Tyrians bear architectural similarities to those in Knossos, and the presence of Minoan-style frescoes and pottery in Mycenaean contexts indicates the appreciation and imitation of Minoan aesthetics. The Linear B script of the Mycenaeans deciphered in the mid-20th century, reveals a close derivative of the Minoan Linear A, further underlining the significant influence of Minoan literacy and administration on the Mycenaean civilization. Although the language encoded in Linear B is an early form of Greek, the adoption of a Minoan writing system demonstrates the extent to which the Mycenaeans look to Crete for cultural and administrative inspiration. Next, 
the Egyptians were active long before the emergence of the Minoan civilization and continued long after its demise. The New Kingdom period of Egypt, 1550 to 1070 BC, overlapped with the Minoan civilization. The connection between ancient Egypt and the Minoan civilization was principally facilitated by their common involvement in the vibrant Mediterranean trade network. The Minoans, based on the island of Crete, were expert seafarers and traders, known to have established routes throughout the Mediterranean, including Egypt. Artifacts of Minoan origin, such as pottery, have been unearthed in Egyptian archaeological sites, indicating that Minoan goods reached Egypt through trade. Similarly, Egyptian goods and materials were also found in Minoan archaeological sites. Particularly noteworthy was the discovery of Egyptian faience objects in the Palace of Knossos, the most famous Minoan site. The exchange of goods not only enabled material prosperity, but also facilitated the transfer of ideas and cultural practices between the two civilizations. Interestingly, the coexistence of the Minoan and Egyptian civilizations was also marked by shared catastrophes. Around 1628 BC, the eruption of the Thera volcano in the Aegean Sea, not far from Crete, sent shockwaves throughout the region. This volcanic eruption and the ensuing tsunami significantly impacted the Minoan civilization, causing substantial damage to their major cities and trading ports. In Egypt, the eruption coincided with a period of documented upheaval, often linked to the biblical Exodus story. The Tempest Stella of Amosi, an Egyptian pharaoh, mentions darkness, thunder, and rain of unusual intensity around the same time, which some researchers interpret as the effects fell from the distant Thera eruption. If indeed these events are connected, it underlines how these disparate civilizations were tied together, not just by trade and cultural exchange, but also by shared experiences of natural disasters. The Indus Valley civilization in the South Asia region was also a contemporary, though it had mostly declined by the time of the Minoan civilization was at its peak. Known for its urban planning, this civilization existed from approximately 3300 to 1300 BC. While direct contact between these civilizations is less evident due to the great distance between them, the existence of extensive ancient trade networks makes some level of cultural exchange possible. It is important to note that the Minoan religion is not fully understood, but we can gather some information from their art, buildings, and objects. This gives us glimpses into their religious practices. For example, we see depictions of ceremonies and rituals in their artwork, like pouring drinks as offerings, making food offerings, processions, feasts, and even sporting events like ball leaping. They seem to have held great respect for natural forces and nature itself. Artworks portray a goddess figure representing the earth, often depicted as a curvaceous female and a male figure holding several animals. The palaces had open courtyards where people could gather for important events. The rooms in the palaces often had wells and channels for pouring drinks as offerings, as mentioned before. Bulls were also significant in Minoan art, and their horns were used as decorations on palace walls and in various forms of artwork, like jewelry, frescoes, and pottery designs. Additionally, there is evidence of cult rituals being performed in dramatic rural locations, such as hilltops and caves. These sites show signs of religious practices taking place there. The advanced nature of Minoan civilization and their ability to engage in trade can be seen through their use of writing. They had two writing systems, Cretan Hieroglyphic and Linear A. Unfortunately, experts haven't been able to decipher either of these scripts yet. They mainly used these scripts on clay tablets for administrative purposes, such as keeping records. Another important method of record keeping was making seal impressions on clay. These practices demonstrate the organization and sophistication of Minoan society. The Minoans demonstrated their advanced culture through their diverse and high quality artwork. Their pottery, in particular, showcases their skill and creativity. Archaeological discoveries have revealed a wide range of pottery vessels, ranging from delicate cups to large storage jars called pithoi. Initially, ceramics were made by hand, but later they began using a potter's wheel for more precise production. In terms of decoration, there was an evolution in stars. The earlier Khmers were featured intricate geometric patterns, while the later floral and marine styles depicted vibrant and lifelike representations of flowers, plants, and sea creatures. Common pottery shapes included a morphi with three handles, tall beak jugs, squat round vessels with a false spout, beakers, small lidded boxes, and ritual vessels with figure eight shaped handles. In addition to pottery, the Minoans used stone to create similar types of vessels and writer, which were special ritual vessels used for pouring libations. These writer often took the form of animal heads. 
While we don't have large statues from the Minoan civilization that have survived, we do have a variety of figurines made from materials like bronze and clay. The early clay figurines give us a glimpse of the clothing styles of that era. The male figures, colored red, wear loincloths with belts, while the female figurines, colored white, are depicted in long flowing dresses with open front jackets. There are a few exceptional works worth mentioning. An ivory figurine of a leaping acrobat and the Phaeon snake goddess are particularly noteworthy. These pieces showcase the Minoans' fondness for capturing figures in dynamic and striking poses. Although we don't have large-scale sculptures, these figurines provide insights into the Minoan artistic sensibilities and their ability to depict figures in motion. The Minoans express their appreciation for the sea and nature through magnificent frescoes that adorn the walls, ceilings, and floors of their palaces. These frescoes provide valuable insights into their religious beliefs, community life, and funeral customs. The subjects depicted in these artworks varied in size, ranging from tiny details to larger-than-life scenes. One notable aspect of Minoan frescoes is their portrayal of natural landscapes without any human figures present. This demonstrates the Minoans' deep admiration for nature itself. Animals are also frequently featured, often depicted in their natural habitats. Monkeys, birds, dolphins, and fish were commonly depicted, bringing the scenes to life. In terms of artistic composition, Minoan frescoes were often framed by decorative borders, consisting of geometric designs. However, the main frescoes themselves sometimes transcended traditional boundaries, such as corners, and covered multiple walls within a single room, effectively enveloping the viewer in a captivating visual experience. The Minoans, being skilled sailors, had contact with people from different regions in the Aegean Sea. We can see evidence of this through the influences from Near Eastern and Egyptian cultures in their early art. Additionally, they engaged in trade with other regions, particularly through the exchange of pottery, food items like oil and wine, and receiving valuable objects and materials like copper from places like Cyprus and Attica, as well as ivory from Egypt. There are also indications that several islands in the Aegean, especially in the Cyclades, had similar economic and political structures centered around palaces, much like what was observed in Crete. Minoan artists, particularly those skilled in fresco painting, even traveled to royal palaces in Egypt and the Levant to showcase their talent and contribute to the artistic endeavors in those regions. This demonstrates the Minoans' influence and connections with various cultures in the wider Aegean area. The reasons behind the downfall of the Minoan civilization are still a topic of debate among experts. While many palaces and settlements show signs of fire and destruction around 1450 BC, Knossos, the main palace, was destroyed at a later time, possibly a century afterward. One plausible explanation is the emergence of the Mycenaean civilization in the mid-2nd millennium BC on the Greek mainland. There is evidence of their cultural influence on later Minoan art and trade, making them a likely factor in the decline of the Minoans. However, other theories suggest that earthquakes and volcanic activity, possibly resulting in a tsunami, may have played a role. The eruption of Thera, present-day Santorini, is often considered a significant event, but the exact date of this cataclysmic eruption is debated, and its connection to the end of the Minoan period remains uncertain. The most probable scenario is a combination of natural environmental damage and competition for wealth, which weakened the Minoan society. This vulnerability may have been exploited by invading Mycenaeans. Regardless of the course, most of the Minoan sites were abandoned by 1200 BC. Crete remained absent from the Mediterranean historical stage until the 8th century BC when it was colonized by archaic Greeks. Moreover, new research on the DNA of old bones found in Crete, a Greek island, indicates that the Minoans, an ancient civilization, were originally from Europe. This discovery provides fresh insights into the ongoing debate about where the Minoans originally came from. Previously, experts had different opinions, suggesting that this Bronze Age civilization originated from Africa, Anatolia, or the Middle East. The findings of this study are published in the Nature Communications Journal. Sir Arthur Evans believed that the ancient Bronze Age civilization in Crete didn't originate there. He proposed that the Minoans were actually people who had fled from Egypt's Nile Delta around 5,000 years ago. They were said to be escaping the conquest of the region by a king from the south. According to George Stanatoyalopoulos, a co-author from the University of Washington in Seattle, US, he was amazed to discover such an advanced civilization on the island of Crete. The basis for this belief was the perceived similarities in the artwork between the Egyptians and the Minoans, as well as the resemblance of circular tombs constructed by earlier residents of southern Crete to those built by ancient Libyans. 
However, other archaeologists have put forth different theories, suggesting that the Minoans may have originated from Palestine, Syria, or Anatolia. In his research, Professor Stoyer Tamalopoulos and his team examined the DNA of 37 people who were buried in a cave on the Latathi Plateau in the eastern part of the island. These burials are believed to be from the middle of the Minoan period, approximately 3,700 years ago. The scientists concentrated on studying mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, taken from the teeth of the skeletons. This particular kind of DNA is stored in the cell's batteries and is inherited from the mother to the child with minimal changes. To investigate further, the researchers examined the frequencies of different types of mitochondrial DNA lineages, called haplogroups within the ancient Minoan samples. They compared this data to information from 135 other populations, which included both ancient individuals from Europe and Anatalia to present-day populations. Surprisingly, the comparison revealed the Minoans did not share a significant genetic resemblance with people from North Africa. The ancient Cretans showed little genetic similarity to populations from Libya, Egypt, or Sudan. What's more, they were genetically distant from populations in the Arabian Peninsula, including individuals from Saudi Arabia and Yemen. The DNA of the ancient Minoans shared the most similarities with populations from Western and Northern Europe. Specifically, they displayed genetic connections with Bronze Age populations from Sardinia and Iberia, as well as Neolithic samples from Scandinavia and France. Interestingly, the ancient Minoans also showed resemblances to the present-day population living on the Lathu Plateau, which has previously caught the attention of genetic researchers. Based on these findings, the researchers concluded that the Minoan civilization was likely a local development. It is believed that the inhabitants of the island, who probably arrived around 9,000 years ago during the Neolithic period, were the originators of this remarkable civilization. There has been all this controversy over the years, we have shown how the analysis of DNA can help archaeologists and historians put things straight, Professor Steyer Tyanopoulos told BBC News. The social hierarchy of the Minoan civilization, based on the available archaeological evidence, is believed to have been relatively egalitarian compared to other contemporary civilizations in the Bronze Age. The Minoans had a complex society with a centralized political system centered around palace complexes. The ruler of each palace, often referred to as a priest-king, held a significant position of authority. However, it is important to note that the term priest-king is a modern designation, and the exact nature of the Minoan rulership remains somewhat uncertain. Below the ruling elite, the Minoan society had a middle class consisting of skilled craftsmen, merchants, and professionals. Artisans and craftsmen played a crucial role in Minoan society, producing a wide range of goods such as pottery, metalwork, textiles, and jewelry. These skilled individuals enjoyed a certain level of status and likely had economic and social influence. At the base of the social hierarchy were the common people, including farmers, laborers, and servants. The Minoan civilization was agriculturally based, and farming was a fundamental occupation. The society relied on the cultivation of crops, such as wheat, barley, olives, and grapes, as well as animal husbandry. Well, that's it about the Minoan civilization. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.